There's a lot of different storylines that aren't just about the superstar players. This is These are two very well-balanced teams. There's not a ton of weak links up and down their lineups in those bullpens. It's going to be great. And those bullpens will be colliding too, Chief. I'm in love with this good life. Coming in hot, Chinchy, back in the real mayor's office. Back finally. Coast, bro. Um, thank goodness you're finally there. We got a Casey jersey in the background. I see the Aaron Judge jersey that we're still trying to give away in, in a couple months. No, no, we're not giving away the Aaron Judge jersey. Oh, we're nuts. oh. That was oh no, my it's jersey the we were trying to give away, not Aaron Judge's. Is that signed? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you were not giving that away. We're not giving that away. What are you nuts? <laughs> oh, what are you nuts? We're giving away my, my signed jersey, which is like, that's why we can't give it away. Yeah, that's true. Dude, you're going on Super 70 Sports again today, right? Ricky Our boy Ricky? Cobb, baby, 11.30 at 5. I can't wait. It's going to be great. He is the best. Right. Um, so yeah, hey, so here we go, dude. It's the day. And we were talking about this before he came on because you were just on a West Coast, flew back home to the East Coast, slept all morning like a vampire. Yeah. And, and like, we don't take into account, this is, this is one of the toughest logistical series possible because not only have that you have great weather in la it is cold here in new york right now dude this is everything that makes it difficult to play a baseball game now they're the pros one thing about being a baseball player is you love the grind you become you you you, you take that badge of honor that you're a grinder you know we're, we're grinders we're, this is what we do it's like you know talk about self-talk being a real thing i mean when you're in that when you're in that eight eight nine month battle of playing every single night, all every day at spring training, showing up for those six weeks, like you you put that badge of honor that I'm a grinder. Well, now you get to the end of October, you're in the World Series. You're this is exactly where you want to be, and you're still grinding. I don't care what anybody says. You're still grinding. You're still battling some injuries. You're still. We talked about Freeman. We talked about Rizzo. We talked about probably every guy on those teams is battling something. There's not one guy that's not doesn't have something on their body that they're battling. But you're finally in the World Series. I remember 2006 with the with the Tigers uh, we're opening up game 1 against the Cardinals in Detroit. It's flurrying. It's oh. like 31 degrees and flurries and I'm like, "Wow." And I remember I remember my, with myself Nike had sent these like these like really good like uh, you know, heat gear stuff. So I put this 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 um, heat gear that that the Nike, that Nike sent me, I go out to run my first sprint. And I'm thinking to myself, what's an advantage I can have tonight? What's an advantage I can have tonight? I was like, I'm from Pittsburgh. I played all my games in the snow and flurries. I went in and changed my shirt. I took that I took that that warm sh sleeve uh, shirt off just so I could. I put a I put a it was still I still had sleeves on, but it was thinner, <laughs> way thinner. But in my mind, I was like, what edge can I have mentally? And so like the. New York feels like they have an edge because they're in April. It's cold there, and they're that's where they're playing. And the Dodgers feel like they have an edge because they they're always playing 75 and sunny degree weather, and they're ready to go. So it's uh <clears throat> it's going to be a heavyweight bout change. I'm really excited. I haven't been this excited for a World Series matchup, you know, in years because when you see the Yankees Dodgers going head to head first time since 1981 with the star power of Judge and Otani kind of leading the charge. I mean, these are real. These are real warriors. Like uh, these are real. These are real. Uh, real teams right now going head to head. It's going to be a lot of fun for baseball uh, and all of us. You know, this is. I'm like nervous, and not as like a Yankee fan. I'm like nervous for all these great superstar players because this is it. It's like, you know, it's like Tyson Holyfield. Like until they fought, you didn't know who was better. You didn't know. You know, you didn't know who had the edge. This is the most heavyweight title fight. There's five MVPs. In this series, there are going to be five MVPs playing in one game, and then they're going to play an entire series for all the marbles, which is nuts. Pitching probables, Cole Flaherty, it lines up after that. You look, you were just looking at them. What do you think about the starting pitching games one, two, three? Let's just say. Well, through, uh... Cole and Flaherty, you know, Flaherty's dude. Flaherty has been a godsend for the Dodgers. They got him at the at the at the break. I think if the Tigers knew where they were going to be heading, they wouldn't. They would not have tr traded Jack Flaherty. But the fact that they were, uh, you know, not doing well at the break, they at the deadline, they traded on the Dodgers, 
who's been a godsend because, you know, all the injuries that they've had. Gavin Stones, you know, ended up going down. Uh, Glass now's out for the year. Kershaw didn't come back. I mean, there were so many things um, that, that went wrong for that rotation with the Dodgers. It's really been their weak link, but they're still kind of going. So Flaherty's been really good. Wasn't good his last outing against the Mets. The Mets got him. They got him early. So Flaherty's a guy that, that, that doesn't have overpowering stuff. It's kind of a throwback. You know, he's, he's 92, 93, 94 occasionally, but he's really got to spot the ball. He's got good movement, good, good sink. You know, so he's really got to spot the ball. This Yankee lineup can get him and get him big. I mean, that's what I think. I think, I think Dave Roberts is going to really look at what, what kind of stuff Flaherty has. What do the swings look like from the, uh, from the Yankees? Are they on him? How, which will be how long he goes. Because that Dodger bullpen has been so lights out. I think the big question is, can Dave Roberts ride them for four more wins? I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be the real question. Yeah. And then on the other side is Garrett Cole. I mean, this is the reason you signed Garrett Cole a few years ago to a $300 million deal was go win us a World Series. You're the best pitcher in the game. Go win us a World Series. And, uh, you know, for, for, for Garrett, man, there's some starts where he looks like lights out Cy Young Award winner. And then there's been some starts where you could see the rust of him, uh, you know, coming into this season a little later, not having the same routine. So we'll see, man. It's going to be a great game one as far as that goes. And then you got lined up for game two. You got Rodon versus Yamamoto. I mean, Rodon's been as advertised for the Yankees as far as a bounce back year. You know, I think last year he really struggled in this in this this offseason, went and kind of figured some things out. He's really been great for the Yankees this year. He's had a few bumps here and there. But over the course of, of that full season, Rodon has been pretty, really a really good number two starter and yeah. a number one at times when Cole was out. So that so that's huge. And then you got Yamamoto. I mean, this is the guy, Chinch, that they're leaning on the Dodgers. I mean, this is the guy that if he's got his good stuff, he is really tough to hit. But if he doesn't, dude, that fastball is a lot flatter than you think. If that split finger's not on, that fastball plays a lot better. So we'll see what he shows up for game two, and then game three they're lining up. Walker Bueller versus Clark Schmidt, both of them have been, have been pretty good this postseason. Bueller is the one guy that if you're the Dodgers, you hope he shows up like he did that last game against the Mets where he started going from the stretch, mm. really had that good 12-6 curveball working out front where guys were chasing at it, had that big strikeout against Lindor with the bases loaded that he punched him out with that 3-2 curveball down the middle. Now, don't forget, though, I just said bases loaded. There was traffic on the bases for Walker Bueller that last start. He got out of it, but had someone clipped him, then you're looking at, oh, he didn't pitch that great. So we'll see, man. A lot of these guys have kind of had those ups and downs years. We'll see which ones show up uh, in the, these first few games. Case, what's that What's that lid you got on right there? Dude, you kidding me? It's my favorite hat. You know me, Chinch. I'm, I'm, I'm a hat snob, dude. I really am. This is my new melon hat. I've had it for a few months now, dude. It's incredible. It's super comfortable. The one thing I love about it, too, you know, sometimes you wear hats all the time. They get those sweat stains. This hat doesn't okay. get a sweat stain. It's got unbelievable comfort fitting. It's, it, it fits perfectly with the snapback on the back. It's, uh, five times more durable, I think, than any other hat I've ever had. So, man, this hat's incredible. The melon hat, man. you gotta get, you got to get a couple of these, brother. Yeah, dude, I've heard about them. It's like the most premium, durable headwear in, like, the whole world. And, you know, people use them for tailgating, working out on a golf course. You're going golfing later today. Yep. Heading out for date night with Sarah. You <laughs> throw the melon cap on, right? Yeah, Am I right? I wear it for everything, dude. The only thing I can't wear it to is premium restaurants where they're like, okay, you got to take your hat off. So, <laughs> other than that, I'm wearing my melon hat pretty much everywhere. Dude, it's my new favorite hat. I've been wearing my melon hat for the uh, past few months straight, dude. No sweat stains, what I said. No smell. Looks the same as the day that I took it out of the box. I get a ton of compliments on it every time I wear it. It's even better. They have different options for different weather. If it's warm out or it might be jumping in the pool, lake, or ocean, you need their hydro collection, bro. The hydro collection is next level change. You'd love that. But when it gets cold and you need to stay warm, don't worry, brother. Melon has you covered there as well. They have a full thermal collection with different levels of warmth to keep you on whatever you need for when the winter's coming up, brother. Big time. Nice. So if you're looking for hats as tough as you, my man, check out Melon. You won't wear anything else after you get one on for yourself. And I know I've been loving my Melon. Yeah, listen to Sean Casey, folks. If you're looking for the world's most durable hat, look no further. Go to Melon.com. That's M-E-L-I-N.com and put it to the test yourself. Yes. 
Yeah, really big, really big. And you've seen some of these guys make the adjustments. You said uh, going to the stretch. How about Rodon coming in way too hot and too amped up a couple starts ago, got knocked around, and he said, you know what? That that was not well, you always say teaching moment. What? Failure is feedback. Failure is feedback. Since that moment, he was like, wait a minute. I got I to gotta pitch more with my, my senses than my, my adrenaline. So it's like just a series of adjustments. This is the second season. The season has nothing to do with the regular season. It's a, it's a, it's a fascinating, fascinating series. What is, if the Yankees win this World Series, what is the thing that they've done, that they've accomplished? Like, what do they need to do most? And on a flip side, what is it with the Dodgers? Well, I mean, I think I think the, the Yankees need to bang. They're going to come out banging because at the end of the day, we're talking about these rotations, but these lineups are elite. And you saw the Dodgers in that series against the Mets. They'll put a 10 spot up, uh, spot on you in a hurry. You know, if Otani's on and Betts is swinging it the way he is, obviously Freeman's been banged up. I think he'll be a little healthier coming into this series, having a few days off. But, you know, Muncie can get you. Will Smith can get you. You know, up and down that lineup. They have a lot of guys that, that can clip you. You know, I think that that's one thing. I mean, Gavin Lux has been swinging it. He could get you. So, um, that's a big thing. I think when you look at the Yankees and, and, you know, I think a key guy that maybe we're not talking about is Glaber Torres at the top because Glaber's had an incredible, really had an incredible postseason, really almost, you know, been one of their MVPs in that lineup. Glaber's really kind of set the tone. So if you get Glaber hot and then you've got Soto Judge, that's huge. Now, hopefully Austin Wells, you know, he can kind of get things going, but he can beat you with one swing of the bat. But Stanton's sitting there at five. Jazz Chisholm, the guys that we're not talking about, I think are going to be the big keys to this to this series. I mean, I think that the Jazz Chisholms, the uh, the the Glaber Torres, the Anthony Volpe's offensively, you know, Anthony Rizzo, you know, these are guys that you know, especially a guy like Riz who has some of that experience. I think the role players in this series will also be uh, you know a big part. You know, which role players play better on each team because the superstars are going to be superstars. I really mm-hmm. believe that. Those guys are going to come out. They're going to come out banging. There's no doubt about it. Um, but you know, when you when you look at when you look at the the, the other players, like a you know a Teoscar Hernandez. I mean, Teoscar Hernandez yeah. is one of the best players for the Dodgers. Like, he's come up with big hits all year long. Like, we talk about those top three guys. Teoscar Hernandez is a bat. You know that can that can change everything. Tommy Edmond, he had an incredible NLCS MVP. I mean, this guy, you know, we're, we're, those are the guys we're probably going to be talking about when you look back at this series. It's going to be those role players that make a name for themselves in October. And uh, I think that's what's going to be a fun thing. Verdugo, you know, he's a point. guy that, 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 that comes out and, you know, you're glad you played him and, and obviously came up with the Dodgers. So there's a lot of different storylines that aren't just about the superstar players. This is, these are two very well-balanced teams. There's not a ton of weak links up and down their lineups in those bullpens, it's going to be great. And those bullpens will be colliding too, Change, believe, believe yeah. me. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you can make a great point. 1978, Dodgers, Yankees, it wasn't about uh, Reggie Jackson and all those guys. It's guys like Brian Doyle, who was replacing Willie Randolph, who was hurt, who had one of the greatest po- World Series in history. <laughs> like, that's just, that's how it works, man. And here we are. Here we are. That's how you uh, get to know guys like Mark Lemke for the, you know, yes. oh, who's, well, Mark, Mark Lemke just dominates right. in the World Series. Like, you, you just... The guys, I think that's the great thing. Go back to the, um, I was reading the other day, go back to the 2018 World Series, I believe, with the Red Sox. Do you know who the MVP was? No, I do not, actually. I didn't know until Steve Pierce. There you go. <laughs> great Steve example. Steve Pierce was the MVP of the 2018 World Series when the Red Sox beat the Dodgers. Like, wow. we're, somebody is going to emerge. There so you Mark go. Lemke, Steve Pierce, Doyle, somebody's going to emerge in this series as, like, man, the MVP might be Glaber Torres. You got a pick? for the world gonna, series champions in how many games I, I i think the yankees are going to win and they're going to win in seven it's going to go all the way to the end this series this world series is going to be as advertised I really do. it's got to go long but i have this thing that's just stuck in my head saying yankees in five and it sounds really wow. stupid it sounds stupid it doesn't make any sense you're, you're just you're, you're talking with your heart now like, that is my that's maybe my heart stress. you don't want the stress of six and seven <laughs> i really don't all right it's going to be amazing Go get on that Super 70 Sports. I'm sure he's going to ask you about Burns' bear. So have that prepared in your back. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still all over the internet. Anyway, all right, here we go, America. 
Here we go. It's a nice night, baby. Lock it down. Get in front of that TV. Be ready to go. They're locking horns finally. Yankees, Dodgers, and we Chinch earlier in the year when they faced off, uh, I believe, at Yankee Stadium. We we saw some good baseball. I really believe it's dark tonight. Game one of the World Series. This fall classic. We're going to see the best baseball in the world. Tune in. Everybody will be tuning in. Let's go. All right, man. All right, brother. Have a great weekend. Everyone out there, have a great weekend. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys on Monday.